Welcome to the Twinkle Talks EYFS podcast. Working in the early years is busy, funny, messy and exhausting. Join me, Shana, some of the Twinkle EYFS team, special guest speakers and other early years practitioners as we talk honestly about our experiences. Whether you're listening for CPD, on your commute or to help you relax, Twinkle EYFS will share everything you need to know about all things early years. Hello, lovely listeners. It's Shana here from the Twinkle Talks EYFS podcast, here to bring you another episode of fun, knowledge, kind of, yeah, I'll say knowledge from us, and just a good time, really, I guess. Well, I hope so, anyway. Especially with the guests I've got on today, it's the lovely Julia and Louise, back from our Twinkle Earlier CPD team, here to shed some light on schemas for us. But before we get there, I really was overwhelmed with the success and the feedback of an episode where I shared with you guys your Thank and Educator nominations. Everyone was getting in touch saying it was so heartwarming to hear all these stories so I thought I'd fit in some more this week. What do you say? Let's have a listen to some nominations for Thank an Educator Early Years Practitioner Edition and hear what you've got to say about your wonderful colleagues. Emma has nominated her room leader because they've gone above and beyond to ensure our toddlers are settled into the bigger room and spending weekends ensuring the week ahead is even more special for them. We have a lot of vulnerable children who have SEND needs and she shines and makes sure that they are having the best time at the nursery and that the parents are also thought about and supported. Nicola wants to nominate Wendy for being a superstar, stepping up at her work to take on room lead at short notice and helping the preschoolers prepare for the reception class in September, despite a lot of barriers in the way during the process. Elizabeth wants to nominate the wonderful Natalie, who's an exceptional early years provider. She provides a childminding service in my local area. She promotes play in the outdoors and strives very highly to create a warm and comfortable environment, envisioning the Huga approach. I've known Natalie for a number of years through my business, but admire her so much. She's an outstanding early years provider, Ofsted rated, and just a wonderful person all round. She works very hard and is a very family orientated person. Her home setting is just lovely, the perfect environment for young children to grow and develop. She deserves to be recognized herself and for the amazing work she does promoting early years development. Natalie, you're amazing. Gemma has nominated Tamsin. Shortly returning from mat leave, this wonderful woman is setting an example for the rest of the school and securing the foundational knowledge for future generations. She's so creative and artistic and is always ready to help others. She's currently supporting my transition into EYFS from year three, four, and is just an amazing all round phenomenal woman. And last but certainly not least, Sarah wanted to nominate their nursery manager, Natalie. She is an amazing leader who not only does a fantastic job, she also cares for all her staff and is always there to listen and support us. I must also mention she has a great bond with the children and parents and has four children of her own. I think she really deserves a big thank you. Oh, there you go. Isn't it lovely? I will never get tired of reading them. I think we're such a wonderful community and we we build each other up and it's lovely. So well done to everybody who got a nomination and who nominated someone else. Just sharing that gratitude for each other is really important, isn't it? Uh, but now that's done, we're going to go straight into the episode. So this is going to be the first half of a two-part episode on schemas. The reason we've decided to make two episodes, part one and part two on schemas is because it's such a big topic. We didn't think we'd be able to do it justice by just doing one. So this part one episode is going to be introducing to you what schemas is and what it's all about. And then part two will go really into the details of each different schema. There's quite a few and what it could look like in your earliest setting. So I'm going to pass it over to Julia and Louise. Julia 
and Louise, my lovely Lulia team from CPD. How are you? Yeah, good. Hi. Thanks. Hiya. Good. How are you doing, Shauna? I am well excited today, guys, because we're going to be talking about schemas, right? And I know this is something that has been thrown around quite a lot, and I've heard it in practice and in settings and that but I'll be honest it's not something that I trained in when I was at university they didn't really talk about schemas that much and I think it's pretty uh it's pretty important in early years right it's so important yeah really important oh okay great 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 (laughs) that's why we're here oh my god (laughs) can you imagine if you were just like no no no, it's no (laughs) we're just here for the lols um I mean I am but yeah, and I think a lot of practitioners might be in the same position. And also it's a really good time because there might be some uh, staff who are moving from a different key stage yeah. or they've just qualified and they're thinking, oh, schemas, I've heard about this, but what is it? And here you are. And it's so, so useful in practice. I feel like the more you talk about schemas, the more you're like, oh, I've seen children do that. And I didn't right. know why. Yeah. And so I feel like it will really help people understand why children do certain things, like repeatable behaviours. But yeah, I'll let Lou tell us what they're all about. Well, this is it. Let's start from the beginning. What is a schema and why are they so important? Okay, so um, schemas are defined as repeatable patterns of actions that children followed or become fascinated in um, as they explore and find out about the world around them. Okay, so when children repeat actions, um, it supports the development of their neural pathways in their brain. So as those grow and develop, um, children are becoming um, able to make connections and links between the actions that they're taking um, as they explore schema play. So it gives them sort of a better awareness and a deepening awareness and understanding of the world. And also they're beginning to sort of make sense of themselves within it as well. Oh, wow. So this is like deep. This is like deep how how they literally process information that's been given to them and how they learn what it means kind of yeah exactly it's so it's so important to have sort of a good understanding of schemas to be able to really support children um, as they grow and develop and as children do develop and grow over time their schema play does change as well Um, so their schema play will become more complex and more sophisticated so schema play isn't like uh, sort of a, a specific type of play like sensory play or role play or dramatic play or, and things like that it's play schemas um, are happening all the time and happening anywhere hmm. now I have heard of another type of schema and I think I'm getting confused to so help me out I read somewhere that children develop schemas as they're learning about things so for example they learn uh, basically like how to categorize things and that's what a schema is when they learn about things so like the example they used was they know a horse is a horse because it's got four legs and a tail and says nay and then they come across something like a zebra and initially they'll say oh well that's a horse as well because it's got four legs it's got a tail and wait d- do zebras say nay <laughs> well, that's okay. a question <laughs> All right, this is this is this is too this is too. That's deep, an existential yeah. question. Yeah, let's. That's a whole other podcast episode. Uh, but then through that schema, they learn that oh wait no, this is different because it has stripes, and they add the uh, identify a stripe to a schema that helps them identify zebra. That's a different kind of schema, right? This isn't this isn't what we're talking about. No, there's lots of different types of schemas, and actually we will touch on it a little bit later when we talk about Jean Piaget because right. he talked about schemas a lot. And he talks about them even from babies when they're just born and how they interact and learn the world around them, what it means. So he even talks about looking and, you know, grabbing and sucking and those are schemas as they understand what it is they're interacting with. But today we're just going to be talking about play schemas. Ah, play schemas. So it's slightly different. So they're referred to often as play schemas. And those are the ones that we'll see in the early years. And there's kind of nine types. Tell me. So they they might come under different names because everyone, as always, doesn't agree. But in general, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) these are the cause. So there's transporting. So when children move objects from place to place. 
So you might have seen that when children, often they have a box or a bag and they just collect lots of things up. They might be things that you don't want them to collect, but that's not <laughs> that's not in your control. And a, every so parent's would, nightmare because they exactly. find loads of stuff in a washing machine and you're like, why is there Lego in the washing machine? But that's the schema. You know, they love transporting and that's, that's the one they're exploring oh, there. Okay. So there's another one called Trajectory. So noticing things, how they move, basically. So horizontally or vertically. So that will be a lot of throwing. I was going to say, is it just kids lobbing stuff around? Is that what it is? We're just chucking yeah. stuff. But as they notice, so for example, they're throwing a teddy in the air, they might notice how long that takes to fall versus if they've got a bouncy ball or something like that. So oh. they are noticing how things work. And all these schemas help them to understand lots of different aspects and so although it might be a behavior that you're like oh, I wish you wouldn't throw that across the room yeah try not to lob the peas across the floor David exactly. yeah <laughs> they are actually just trying to understand the world a little bit better. okay so it's interesting um so that's the second one in closing so putting things inside other things Oh, right. Rotation and circular. So that's all about things that go round and round. So like spinning things or then themselves spinning round. Transforming, which is a really cool one. Obviously. Breaking. Like, you mean breaking things? No. Break. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so they can obviously kind of cut and break things, but it's also a lot about messy play and seeing how colours mix together as well. Oh, nice. Seeing how things change, even gardening. You know, those plants are transforming before them really as they grow day day-to-day yeah. I, so, I, I see how you got me there the little train yeah. uh, gardening reference thank I you know, very much I you like that. <laughs> <laughs> um orientation so going over and under things and seeing how things look from different kind of perspectives as well positioning so when you see children putting things in lines or patterns or rows kind of exploring how that works enveloping so kind of actually completely containing or an enveloping objects or things in space or themselves covering mm. themselves up and connecting, so seeing how things come together, connect and separate. So that's the breaking one. Well, yes. <laughs> it's not all about breaking because they're seeing how things come together. So for example, like Lego pieces, they're seeing yeah. how things come together and then taking them apart and seeing how that works in different aspects. So it's very like engineer based, isn't it? It's very cool it's and very scientific. It? it is very, sci like they do develop their scientific thinking and their critical thinking and their problem solving yeah. as they're exploring. I mean, it's a really wonderful way of learning. So that's why it's so cool to talk about it. Yeah, it's, I've, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm putting a lot of you know hilarious jokes in there because I'm really funny but also it's <laughs> it's really interesting because if, if you think about it like is this how they engage with is this more of a physical world thing how they engage with physical and play with physical concepts because to me it's all about how they interact with objects themselves other mm. things and how objects interact with each other yeah but that's also you know they're going to be thinking in their heads too they're going to be thinking oh when they're doing that oh I wonder if when I put this in there that's also going to do the same thing you right. know we don't see always that kind of the cogs whirring in their own brain but they'll be using a lot of their thinking to consider how things work and that's why the problem solving will work as well because if they're transforming something and for example they wanted to make the color brown but instead they mixed two colors and they made purple and they're really surprised and you know so that's something that they'll figure out and they'll try and solve by continuing to explore but it's not necessarily where they thought it was going to go yeah you know what it's really interesting because I suppose we take this stuff for granted don't we like we know if we drop a bag it's going to fall or if we drop a glass it's going to break or if we throw a bean bag like you know we we take all of that kind of stuff for granted because we just know what happens but we must have learned it somewhere mm -hmm. so even though we're taking this well me it sounds like me I'm taking this for granted <laughs> um for a child it must be like especially as babies because a couple of my friends have had babies recently and my friends who are parents they're teachers so they're going yeah. through all the skewers and they can see it um, and even for things like, you know, they, they get their colours one at a time. So they see red first mm -hmm. and then blue and then yellow and then they get green. And you can see the child go, what? I mean, it's mind-blowing, isn't it's it, every day? <laughs> yeah. That's and then so much their spatial awareness in their eyes, they, they don't, like, say for a, ch a chair, yeah. for example, they don't understand that the chair legs, there's gaps in between them. They just see it as an entire piece. Mm -hmm. And so they're exploring space like for for me I just take that for granted like I know what's a solid object and what isn't but they, these are entirely new concepts right and this is how schemas fit in that's how they learn these kind of things that we take for granted so what happens if we we don't do this what if we have a lack of this awareness and development what what are the repercussions 
I think that's something really important to talk about, especially with the behaviours we started to touch on. You know, trajectory can be throwing things or, you know, transporting can be taking valuable, important things (laughs) somewhere else and hiding them. So it's just important to be aware that they show up in behaviours we might not necessarily want or are surprised by but it's really important that children are still allowed to explore those schemas because by discouraging them then they might not have the opportunity to understand and develop their thinking as well as they could do so it's like risky play in a way isn't it it's kind of like well if you do it in a safe environment a controlled environment then there's necessary skills to learn just do it in a way that (laughs) <laughs> means that your two-year-old toddler's not nicking your mo- your wallet. And yeah, if there's it in something the- <laughs> really important, maybe just hide that away. If you've got a passport <laughs> that you don't want <laughs> ruined, perhaps put it some in a safe place. <laughs> got you, got you. Uh, I think also that one of the important things to to sort of be aware of is that because the schemas represent their current understanding, they kind of work through a schema. So if, for example, they are into emptying and tipping, then you'd probably be thinking thinking about modifying the environment around to be able Mm -hmm. to a support them or like you say maybe moving things out the way that they might be drawn to because of that interest in that schema so but as they sort of develop and investigate and explore they're modifying their schemas all the time so for example a child that maybe is fascinated with emptying and tipping they're going to be doing that a lot and then they might then move on to a different type of schema as they sort of their understanding develops that was going to be my next question actually can a child learn what more than one schema at a time or is it one at a time is there a specific order that they go through or is it just like a random good luck well it's like every child's unique isn't it in that same sense right you can't ever predict what a child's going to be learning or what they'll be fascinated by. I was going to say, is it based on their interests and what catches their interest first kind of thing? And when they're learning these schemas, is there a process? Like, you know, like how a scientific investigation happens? Like, is it observation and then they experiment and then they try different things or explore? Is there like a, a process for learning the schema? I don't think there's a necessarily order to them. I think it probably is a little bit of cause and effect. So for babies, if they're not walking yet, you know, if they if they touch something that makes a noise or something, so they then they would repeat that action again. And they, so I think it depends. I think it depends on. Yeah, it depends on what their experiences are, right? Yeah. And I think some children will stay with some schemas for longer because they're so fascinated by them or they have different resources that are supporting them and they'll explore explore those for longer whereas some children will go from one to another like you were asking will it just be one scheme at a time that's not the case I mean they'll right like it would be easier for us if that were the case we're like oh yes great I take off this schema but that's just <laughs> not life and it's not children they'll be fascinated by more than one thing at a time right and you'll see that in different contexts so it's just important to be aware of all of them so you can start to spot them they might be fascinated with one for a certain period of time longer than others but yeah it'll be more than one I would say that was my another that was going to be my next 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 question is is there like a specific time frame that it usually takes a child to work through a schema am I just being too yeah why are you trying to put them in a box I'm trying to put these in a box aren't I I just need to be free I'm sorry <laughs> are you, you know, an just, early as teacher I know. Not, my friend <laughs> oh my gosh I just like I've forgotten I just so like they start free. on day one and they finish <laughs> on day seven and then we all go to bed <laughs> I just like routine okay yeah all right. I, I think there's no rules with this I don't think yeah. there's a... stop trying to put them in a box yeah <laughs> There's no, you must start here and you end here or you can only be interested in this schema for this amount of time and then you have to move on. (laughs) There's no rules and they can develop schemas at the same time. However, I think the thing that they're most interested in, the will become their dominant schema so you'll be able to observe that cool all right sorry (laughs) slap on the wrist move away from that box yeah let's just move on (laughs) i've been told off so where did all this come from because this must have come from somebody doing research or they must have observed it like where where's it come from well as we did mention before jean piaget did start with the schemas like it does go back to him and he did watch and observe children from a very young age. Like I was saying, they started to pick up on the schemas that we're not necessarily focusing on in this episode, but schemas like the sucking and the looking and the the touching as well. So it was all kind of a, basically put it in the sense of it's a mental structure so they can interpret and organise information. So what we've talked about before, and then they have little patterns of behaviour 
just to help them understand the world and their experiences around them. So it came from him and then lots of other people have built on his work since. Oh, like who? Um, so there's an early years specialist called Chris Athey, who has, uh, she's done a lot of work around the development of schema theory in the UK. And I would say um, one of her beliefs is that several schemas can develop at one time. And she really advocates observing children's schemas in order to plan and extend children's learning. And I think because her professional career background is all around early years practice that's been really supportive for practitioners to understand a little bit more about the power of observation to help guide practitioners to follow the child's interests and develop their thinking Mm. and can we like go and find these people and their work um well we've we've obviously added some of the research to the cpd powerpoint that we've created and then there are handouts and posters and lots of resources that will be able to support practitioners and educators amazing you know what i'll stick a a couple of those resources in the episode description, shall I? One oh, click away. Idea, Perfect. <laughs> do, do you know, we're like a finely oiled machine, aren't we? We've been doing this. <laughs> so for new. So Any others? Or is that just... Those are the main ones, but we do mention others in the PowerPoint. So we thought, yeah. let's not get into too much detail for sure. as we chat. But for more information, you can definitely find Great. Things. And of course, like the next episode, we're going to really get down into it, aren't we? So this is Ooh. just the intro. So great, great, great. So we've got a couple of questions from our listeners, actually, um, from some practitioners. So the first one is, how can I best approach supporting schemas in my setting? Oh, so that's a really, really good question. And there's lots of different ways to support schema play and schema development for young children. And they are lots of things that educators will already be doing. So for a start, offering a play-based, child-centred and child-led approach is the best way to support schema development through observing what children are interested in, observing their play and what they're doing and how they're exploring and offering a flexible curriculum. So allowing to go with the child's interests. So I would say most early years practitioners are very skilled in that area in terms Mm. of the observation and really watching and interpreting how children are playing, exploring. And I think another thing is really allowing time for children to be uninterrupted and what we call in the state of flow, because if children are stop starting all the time, Mm. you're not going to be able to get a true sort of picture of the schemas that they are exploring but also Mm. for children in order for deep learning to take place and then for to sort of make those connections and really understand what is happening as they're exploring whatever schema they're doing they need time to be able to see something through Um, so making sure there is time given for children just to play and explore and as we know you know days in earliest settings can be quite stop start so it it is trying to get a really good balance Mm. as well as that a really an environment that offers lots for the child and as we've mentioned before in in some of our other podcasts thinking of the learning environment as the third teacher to enable lots of discovery and investigation to take place so thinking really carefully about what you're putting into the learning environment to match children's schema interests. Would you recommend having like a schema area or do you think schemas is something that should be integrated in all the areas of a classroom or setting? As I mentioned before about not seeing it as something like sensory play or an activity that you might put out or might offer schema play can take place anywhere and at any time so therefore your environment needs to reflect it wherever whether it's indoor or outdoor so it's just given those little opportunities in whatever area they're looking for whether it's the water area the role play you know do they have opportunities to explore enveloping or transporting mm-hmm. or yeah. right okay so if, for example you've got a child that is presenting as really being interested in rotation and things that go round and round you'd be 
be thinking about what you could offer into your water play. So maybe putting water wheels or things that can be rolled into the water. Or you might be thinking about in your construction area having various objects that can roll down ramps. So it's just looking for the opportunities in whatever part of the environment. And we'll talk more about that in our next episode as we talk about play ideas and also language that can help develop schema play. Mm. So our last question from our listeners is what can educators do as teachers, as facilitators, what can they do to support the schemas? You know, you've got your environment set up, you kind of know what the schemas are, what can you physically do? So we already touched on a little bit the importance of firstly observation because I think that's something that we can't pass over how important that is because that will really help us to understand children's fascinations and what schemas they're actually interested in at the time and then through that that will help facilitate what you can then plan and the resources you can put in place like we were talking about if you notice that rotation is something that they're all looking into then you can consider you know focusing on how you see rotation in everyday life and also start talking about for example like the wheels on cars and then spotting all over and use that as a talking point and really set it up in the environment to extend their learning so that's something that's really important there's also lots of language around schemas every single type of schema has lots of beautiful enriched language that you can help children to kind of say so that's something that you can go back and really think about and say oh how can I extend their vocabulary in this schema area so that's something that we can do as well that's really nice And another one that's really lovely is providing open-ended opportunities and resources. So lots of these things, sometimes people think, oh, they're exploring this. So I'm just going to give them, you know, only very specific resources. But actually those open-ended resources allow children to explore their schemas no matter what they are. So you're not providing for just one child that's looking at transporting. You're also providing for another child that's looking into orientation. So just consider how different resources can be used in different ways to make sure that every child is supported. Okay, so take the rotation one as an example. Mm-hmm. If you if you feel like one of your children is exploring that rotation schema, you don't just want to give them things that rotate. You want to give them things that don't as well, don't you? Because it's like yeah, you're missing exactly. half the story. So yeah. And they want to rotate themselves as well. Yeah. You know, like even like ribbons, they want to see how that works to make different shapes. So yeah, it's not that closed in. So you do have to try and think, okay, how can they use these in different ways and what kind of open-ended loose parts can help encourage them? I like it. I like it. <laughs> Right, well, talking of vocabulary, I've got a quick game for you, okay? Because, you know, there's lots of vocabulary about these schemas and, you know, what words to say to encourage thinking and whatever. Well, let's see if you know what you're talking about, right? Oh, no. Yes, yes, you've walked into this one. It's time to test you. I'm going to use a resource that you made, Louise. All right to test oh. you i am i'm gonna i'm gonna be that person i'm dun, gonna dun, do dun. it yeah you've made a really cool print out that you can stick on your lanyard about schema vocabulary and it breaks down the different schemas and the different core and extended vocabulary you can use to oh, help yes. develop that schema so let's see if you remember uh, what vocabulary goes to what schema are you ready oh this is gonna be tricky go on ah. I can't Already. make it easy for you. Let's see. Right, okay. Your first one is oh, I'm going to mix it up. Okay. Uh, your core vocab can include dig, hide, uh, gone, uh, more, less, space. That's what I'm giving you. Mm, which one? Ooh, I feel it's between two. Which one do you think, Lou? Well, I was going to say it's either enclosing or enveloping, but I yeah. think it's enveloping. My first thought was enveloping, but I thought it could be either one because we've even said when we write things, there's a lot of crossover between these two. No, that's a that's a cop out. No, 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 no. There's a lot of crossover. No, pick one. Pick one. <laughs> I am giving you points on this. Envelope. Can you can you repeat them? <laughs> can you repeat the question, please? God no, I can't remember what I said. <laughs> Enveloping. Do you do you concur, Lou? Yeah, that's the one I think it is. All right, ding, 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 ding. One point to both of you. Well done. <laughs> All right, use drawing at the minute. Well done. Eight more to go. <laughs> okay, your next one. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Pour, move, 
Swing, fly. Oh, splatter. That's a great word. What uh, what scheme is that? Trajectory. Trajectory. Things that move. Yeah, all right. Okay, another one point each. <laughs> Disappointed. I am because you're too clever. Like, I want some jeopardy, guys. I want one of you to get it wrong. Who's gonna, if you can just you're both gonna win. You're number two. That's, that's true. You're already so disappointed I'm at just, how well we're doing. I know you wrote these resources. You should be and, hyping us up here. I mean, yeah. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Okay. I'm right, not sure you should three. be a TV host. <laughs> <laughs> boo! You got it right, boo. <laughs> Look, all right, you just, you, the fame chooses you. You don't choose fame, all right? It's just what happens. You know what we should have done? We should have done one for you. Yes. Uh, excuse me, who's the host of this show? This is we my should show. see if you learnt anything. Excuse me, I make the rules. All right, let's move on. <clears throat> Number three, up, down, inside, row, next oh. to. Positioning. I concur. Can you just like not agree on something for once? I'm sorry, um, connection? Ah, you got it wrong, Julia. <laughs> when you started and you said up, down. Yes, that I could have been something else. I was thinking orientation to begin mm, with. Me too. But then. Well then what are you picking? Oh, I'm definitely picking positioning. positioning. Yeah. What did you put next to? All right, damn it, three points, both of you. God's sake. <laughs> Congratulations! Woo! Where you is what? the genuine happiness from <laughs> our congratulations, <laughs> madam? You know what? Where it's because I'm I'm using core vocabulary. I'm making this too easy. I'm gonna I'm gonna scaffold. Okay, I'm gonna extend Ooh, your learning. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna use extended vocabulary right. for both of you because you're clearly more able. Yeah, you're number four. We're on number four now. Yes. Okay. Reverse. Suspend. Magnify. Transparent. Yeah, get that schema, ladies. <laughs> Can you say again? <laughs> That one's harder. Good. Uh, I'm gonna go orientation. Yeah, because of transparent and magnify places and. All right, four for four. For God's sake. <laughs> yes, it is the orientation schema. Congratulations, Yay. well done, well done. All right. Okay, this one's easy because even I'll get this one. Yeah, but you're reading it, so obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that means anything. All right, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Okay, <laughs> swivel. Real coil whisk. Oh, there's silence in the room for once. Rotation? Yeah, that makes sense. Rotation circular. Yeah. Five for five, ladies. Oh, woohoo. Woohoo. Did woo you feel the enthusiasm that time? That you know, it felt more enthusiastic. Right. It did cool. feel yeah. a bit more genuine. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm trying my best here, guys. Number six. Oh, no, they're too easy now. I should have, <laughs> I should have done these ones at the beginning. <laughs> Fence, border. Entrance, uh, exit. In closing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Six for six. In closing schema. Great words. Fantastic. I'm loving this game. You're almost making it so easy that anyone can learn the words for this schema. <laughs> oh, that's really weird, that, yeah. isn't it? Are we all learning? Is that what's happening? Is this learning? Is this accessible to everybody? <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Oh, there's some big words here. Mold. Great. Squeeze. Juice. Ooh, transforming it has to be why isn't that such a nice one because it's changing all of those words the things are changing from the beginning to that's the end that's true also frothy is on there as a word i love that that's great that's cool love i never the word frothy right? i just want a i love transforming things i want to do all these things right now <laughs> i'm not going to lie i love all of these words <laughs> <laughs> they are great words all right stop tooting your own horn guys you did make this yeah all right <laughs> It's brilliant, well done. We didn't invent schemas, so <laughs> <laughs> it's not really us. But yes, it is transforming schema seven for seven, Woo! ladies. Your penultimate core vocab include level, float, journey. Oh, Don't pretend that this is hard. I know you know this already. Journey. Journey. That's transporting, isn't it? Is it going on a transport journey? Oh, float, yes. Because it goes transport. goes on a journey, doesn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that, one oh, place that to another. Stumped, nearly stumped. <gasps> ne I nearly got her. I nearly. No, oh, no. Oh, okay. Can we do one for you? No. Eight for eight. <laughs> You're like, don't even try it. <laughs> oh, you know what? Let's flip this one on its head then. What's the last one? And can you give me some vocabulary? Mm, linking. Uh, let me check the list. Uh, yes, damn it. Yeah, that's on there. Connecting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, damn. Like together apart. Yes. Uh, uh, construct. Yes. All right, you, you guys are way too good at this. Link? Did we say link? Yes, yeah. we said link. Uh, right, well, you got it then. Nine for nine. Woo! You know your scheme skills. 
You know your Thank schemas, you. so congrats. I feel like we should get a reward. Yes, I'm yeah. waiting for my reward very patiently. <laughs> uh, your reward is victory. <laughs> Congratulations! <Yay>! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was fun. This is our part one of Schemas, little introduction. So I'll let you rest now, let you recover. Because next time I see you, we're going to go deep. We're going to go into the different schemas. We're going to talk about what they look like, uh, how you could support in each one. And we're going to we're gonna have some uh, more game show fun. <laughs> I'll make it harder. <laughs> I'm definitely making it harder. Yeah, I can tell that that was not satisfying for you because Terrible. you wanted us to lose. <laughs> I wanted you to fail. I did. That was the warm up. I must admit, I didn't understand, really. <laughs> Julia, I think we need to construct our own game. I think that's a good idea. You can surprise me. We'll at the be end. back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, worry. and oh, sorry to say that uh, Julia and Lily aren't coming on anymore. Uh, <laughs> oh, you can know. try it. <laughs> well, well, I'll get preparing then, and I'll uh, I'll yes. see you next time. All right. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thanks Shana. for having us. Bye. 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 Super, that's the end of the episode. I think you can tell I got a little bit tired by the end. My brain was just so mind blown from all the information that Julia and Louise always have. By the time we get to the game, I just end up getting really silly. But you know, that's all fun and games. It's part of the joy of early years, I guess. I'll just I'll just blame it on that. I don't know what was happening. But I can't wait for you to come and join us again for Schemas Part 2. That'll be coming in a couple of weeks. But for now... Have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you would like to join in or would like to know more, then come and find us on our social media sites. We have a Facebook page, Facebook groups, an Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Pinterest and YouTube. All the links of where to find us will be in our podcast description. Come and join the conversation. And whatever you're doing today, I hope you have a great day.